my concern are those very subversive kind of Andy Kaufman, Joan Rivers, Patrice O'Neill types of comics, the ones that really push the boundaries, who are just brilliant. Those, those people would never be produced in today's climate. It just wouldn't happen. Joan Rivers wouldn't happen now. Couldn't. Yeah. Because, because she wouldn't get booked enough to get good enough. So the thing about the comedy circuit is you rely on promoters booking you so you get stage time. Um, and that's how you get good. No comic is good from day one. And the ones that are, that are artificially promoted because they become fashionable for whatever reason are never good and they never become good. You need years on the circuit to develop it. But if you've got a situation where if you joke about a certain issue or topic, the promoter says, you can't do that, you're not becoming back and tells the other promoters not to book. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. So you'll find a lot of young comics at the moment. And I found this when I was teaching stand-up at the Soho Theatre, is they ended up doing sermons, basically, and policing each other's act. We used to do a thing where we did feedback on each other's routines, and it was great early on. A few years in, they started saying, sort of policing it, saying, you're not, you don't have the lived experience to talk about that, et cetera. And so you, this is why no, there are no, you know, you're not going to get great comics coming up in this climate, doesn't it? But the arts generally, the theatre's captured, film is captured, television. This is a disaster for the arts, this entire movement. This is one of my main concerns. I wrote a chapter in the book about this. My main concern is, is the arts. Um, well, not my main concern, but a huge concern. Because a, a, a genius can't flourish if it is curtailed. And uh, we're in that situation now. Um, and it's getting worse. Whether I, and like I say, I don't have to self-censor because I don't instinctively do the stuff that would need to be censored. My worry is for the ones that would. Take Jerry Sadowitz. So Jerry Sadowitz, the most subversive comic I've ever seen, the most subversive comic in the country, has his show cancelled. And the venue in Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Fringe, the Pleasant Theatre Trust, puts out a statement saying the, the, the opinions he expressed on stage are not in line with our values. They weren't opinions, they were jokes. And the fact that a comedy promoter doesn't know what a joke is should be troubling to all of us. The fact that comedy commissioners at the BBC and various other channels don't know, understand comedy and have to snip out the scene in Faulty Towers in, the, in, the, in the, the episode called The Germans where the major uses a racial slur because they think it's racist, even though it's mocking the racist for saying it. These people are comedy illiterate and yet they're in charge of the industry. The comedy industry's fucked, frankly. Um, so you're not going to get those subversive people. So like I say, no, I don't self-censor and I've never been censored and I have no reason to self-censor. Hmm. Um, I mean, but but what you've just said is the, is the gloomy bit, isn't it? Really? Right. I mean, there was I trying to strike a sunshiny note. Oh, you were trying to be funny, right? Everything, everything's fine, but right. actually it's the, it's the theatre, the arts, these kind of industries, yeah, the, the money is flowing to the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Well, have you like, been going to the theatre lately? Have yeah. you, like, basically every show is a sermon, basically. And it's a sermon of the establishment point of view. So boring. It's like watching state-sanctioned art. It's like, it's, bo it's boring. Like, this is the thing about, and I, I make the point in the book, is like, when I was growing up and, we, and there were popular shows with diverse casts, Red Dwarf, two, the two lead roles in Red Dwarf are black guys, we didn't even notice. Not that we didn't see race, right? But we didn't care. And no one cared. And now, you, now that happens and you think, oh, that's a diversity hire. Sometimes it is and the person isn't very good. And, and sometimes it's, it's, it's shoehorning. So, and we notice, this is one of the most unforgivable things about this movement. I think it's re-racialized society. It's made us see race everywhere and be anxious about it. And we were so close. We, would get, we were almost there and then they fucked it. We were doing really, really well. Um, and then they've just taken us back. They've unpicked all that, the great work that was done. So it's in the name of anti-racism, you know, it's really sad.